Hello, this is Tanika Steens, and welcome to Mind Your Business. And tonight we are talking about marriage and ministry. And our guest is Pastor Robert and Minister Walisha Scape. They've been married for 26 years and are the proud parents of three children, Jawan, 29, Jayla, 22, and Josiah, 16. They are members of Union Missionary Baptist Church in Muncie, Indiana, where Robert has been senior pastor for four years. Pastor Rob was licensed to preach the gospel in 1995 and ordained in June of 2005. As a lay minister, he served his pastor, Pastor W.J. Jackson Sr., faithfully as armor bearer, director of men's ministry, as well as assisting Pastor Jackson in preparing newly licensed ministers to teach and preach the word of God. Pastor Rob was voted in as assistant pastor in May of 2015 and as senior pastor on March 19, 2016. Before becoming pastor of Union Missionary Baptist Church, Pastor Rob served our community as a police officer and later detective with the Muncie Police Department. While on the department, he also led the task force that focused on gang activity and facilitated related um, presentations and trainings. He was awarded the Human Freed the Herman Freed Integrity, Loyalty, Ethics, and Attitude Award in 2005, Investigator of the Year Award from the former Mayor McShirley in 2010, and the Muncie Black Expo President's Award for Community Service in 2014. Pastor Rob earned his undergraduate degree from Indiana Wesley University Bible Studies and is currently pursuing his MDiv also from IWU. Minister Walisha began preaching as a licensed minister of the gospel under Union's former pastor, W.J. Jackson, in 1999. She has served in multiple capacities at Union Missionary Baptist Church, including being hired by the church as coordinator of ministries 2003 to 2008. Minister Walisha earned her B.S. in organizational leadership from Anderson University and her M.A. in executive development for public um, service, special focus in adult and community education from Ball State University. She is currently employed at Ball State University in early childhood, youth and family studies departments, assisting with instruction in the national recognized schools within the context of community program of community engaged teacher preparation. Minister Relisha is also the family and community engagement coordinator for the longstanding Muncie MP3 program, an IDOE funded initiative to ensure great level reading for neighborhood children. She is also a liaison trainer and consultant. Minister Walisha is passionate about bridging the gap between family, community, and school on behalf of children. She is a public speaker, mentor, and writer whose work has been published in prominent venues. The Scapes has preached numerous sermons, taught in many conference workshops, and spoken at professional forums and summits nationwide. Together, the couple has received many commendations, including the Champions for Kids, Civic Volunteers Award from Prevent Child Abuse in April 2015, and the Mayor James P. Carey Community Service Award from the Dr. Martin Luther King Dream Team 2017. They recently co-authored along with esteemed colleagues a manuscript focused on reimagining schools and how the Black church experience can positively reshape classrooms, which will be published in 2021 in Teachers College Record, the Journal of Teachers College, Columbia University. The Scapes give all the glory to God for his blessings and favor in their lives. We deserve, we desire above all to edify God pe God's people and glorify our God is their mission that they live by. So thank you for joining us tonight. And we now will welcome our guest, Pastor Rob and Minister Walisha Scaife. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. I didn't know if I had you there. There we go. Yes. Okay. How are you Hi, this I'm evening? Okay. How, how are you doing? Oh, pretty good. Man, you guys have got a lot that you've done and you're so young and vibrant. <laughs> how do you keep it all together? <laughs> Yeah. So um, um, I introduced you a little bit, but if you go ahead and like to um, tell everybody a little bit about who you are and what you do and why you do it. Okay, well, I've, ladies first, whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> Melissa Scaife, um, just, you know, just passionate about um, families uh, in terms of my marketplace ministries, what I like to call it passionate about um, advocating for marginalized families and communities to ensure that um, people are getting what they deserve, um, to ensure that 
Um, those who, I believe all people have voices, but I think that there are some voices we tend not to listen to. So just working hard to try to ensure that those voices are lifted, um, um, especially passionate about children, um, equity in schools, um, passionate about discipleship. Um, I, I feel like my marketplace ministry and that which we often see as spiritual, so the spiritual and the secular um, God has made clear that for me, it is about helping people reach their goals and their dreams. And um, in the spiritual, of course, I feel like that is to live for the Lord, um, to live the kingdom to the fullest um, while we're here on earth. And um, love being a wife and a mother, um, supporting my kids in all of their different endeavors and um, just just trying to do our best to to live the kingdom as much as we can. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> well, I'm Robert Scaife. Um, I, I'm I, I love teaching. Um, I love uh, just learning more, especially when it deals with the Word of God. I, I, I mean, that has transformed my life over the last 15, 20 years. And so I just like I just like digging into the Word um, and teaching it uh, to people so that they can get it. Um, and, and I tell people all the time that I'm not one of those big word type of people. I, I like I like things broken down to where I can understand it. And so that's how I approach teaching. Um, so I love I love to teach. Um, I love doing things with my family. Uh, I, you know, my wife, uh, she's my best friend. Um, so we're always together. <laughs> Um, never gotten tired of each other in 31 years. And so, well, we have, but, um, <laughs> but, you know, we're always at the end of the day, it's just, it's just me and her. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's what I tell her. I said, no matter what happens at the end of the day, it's just me and you. Mm -hmm. And so um, love my family, spending time with my kids and, and family members. And so, I mean, it's just, it's just the joy um, during, especially during this time, you know, just to be around family a little bit more. And so, but, that's a little bit about me. Well, thank you for sharing. It is good to see the smiles on your faces and just see how you interact and engage with each other. I know being in ministry can be tough on families. And I really admire the fact that husbands and wives are working together in the ministry. There was a long time when the husbands were the pastors in the pulpit and the wives were the first lady sitting on the on the front row and you know and that was their role but mm -hmm. i think it's so important that we can work side by side together in the ministry how has that impacted your life and your family being able to work in the ministry together side by side well i would like to answer that sure. first okay. <laughs> um, it's it's essential for me. Um, I can't see my ministry flourishing without my wife. Um, she she compliments me. She corrects me. <laughs> she helps me. She does everything um, that I need, and and that's how it should be. Um, and 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 I think that just during the times, uh, we have to understand that times change. We're we're in changing seasons, changing times, and. And, and so we're in this period where um, things aren't going to be done the same way that they've always been done. And so that was a shifting um, that has started several years ago and, and, and we're full blown now. And, and I, I, I don't think we'll ever, I pray that we won't ever get back to um, that, that, that mindset or that tradition um, but instead, see the value and worth of husband and wives working in ministry together. And so um, so mine has been um, a necessary and needed um, partnership uh, with my wife because we are one. And and that's what our shirts say. One. Yes. And so yeah. yeah, we're trying to at least look we're, like we're, we're one. We're trying. <laughs> we're, we're working on it. The Lord is the Lord yes. is working on us. But it's been it's it, you know it is so essential. Um, I'm I'm speaking for myself. Um, it is essential for me that I have my wife with me. Um, I don't want to look out and see her on the front row. I mean, if she's sitting out there, she got to stay close so I can hear her and see her. And so, so that's how I look at it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I imagine that it, it is, uh, I don't, 
I don't know what it, it's supposed to look like. So, you know, because you and your husband are in ministry, um, you, you really have to break your mind free from from what people or even you in, in you know, growing up in the church, what it is supposed to look like. You know, what is this? I, I you know, when Robert um, accepted the call to pastor um, and it's it, it was a struggle for me and it still is. Um, and even with, you know, with your promotional piece when it has first lady, you, I, you notice I didn't put that in anything. I, I because no, I role, know. And that's what I was like. I'm going to talk to you about that because I'm like, I, yeah, mm. I, I struggle with I struggle with that. And I think it's because. It doesn't have anything. It is an honorable, and I and I've had women help me with this. Like it is an honorable role and position to have, um, and it is what it is. It, it you know. But I think what has happened over the years is that th there's so many strings seem to have been attached to that title that it it scared me. I I didn't want to feel like I had to be somebody different. You know, I didn't want people to. And, and and who's to say they would? But just just because of the way we all grew up in the church, I didn't want to feel like I might be set up on a particular standard or and I had to live up to that. And if I messed up and, you know, the, the people leave the church or, you know, I, I just I wanted to be be able to be me, I, you know, and and I'm, and I'm striving like I think most people are to, to live for the Lord every day. Um, but we are not perfect. So I, I didn't ex I don't expect that I'll do anything that's going to fail people, you know, tremendously. But, hey, you know that those things happen. So I just I didn't want to carry a mantle that I felt like I couldn't um, I couldn't carry. So, I, you know, I, I asked people not to call me first lady. I, I personally, you know, I've been minister of Alicia for a long time at Union. But my favorite, I think for both of both of us, our favorite titles at the church are Uncle Rob and Aunt Lish. Those are our, those are and that's what the kids call us because of course half of the church half of Whiteley you know are attached to the scapes somehow so all these kids at Longfellow you know they they call me Aunt Lish and so that's the title I, I like most I, you know just we we want to we wanted to be ourselves you you know Pastor Jackson um, our former pastor Pastor Meredith those are big shoes to fill like and no and everybody knows that nobody can fill those shoes so we have to keep telling ourselves we can't be pastor jackson we have learned from him he has laid an incredible foundation we all love him so much he's been a spiritual father for us we we can't do what he did and and god has had to remind us I didn't call you the way I called Pastor Jackson. Mm -hmm. I didn't call you to the exact same work I called him to and, and I called you two together in a sense so you know in a, in a more traditional church that that is challenging. But I think what's harder, what's hardest is what we what, what I expect in my own mindset. The people haven't been haven't pushed anything on me or on us. But in my own mind, I don't want to I don't want people to view me this way or see me this way. We just we just want to be ourselves. We we've always been workers in the church. We continue to we move tables, we move chairs, we you know, we yeah. do those things. And, and that's I think that's what's helped us to 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 stay grounded, to stay in touch. It's shared ministry. We've always been in the trenches with the people. And that's how we, I think that's how we, we like it. Yeah. And I agree. And it's so funny because when I was putting that up, I was like, I feel the same way you do as far as the first lady thing. Cause I, I'm like, okay, here we go. Okay. God, for real, you are calling me to be the first lady. And then I'm like, yeah, I can see me being a minister, but you want me to be the, you know, and because that's what we attach to what we've seen. And, and it's so much, it goes so much further than that. Mm -hmm. And I think the fact that what your husband said about you in the beginning is that you are his best friend, his backbone, his everything that he needs you to be right there. And that's what makes you first lady, if anything, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, you are the one. Have you been on my And I think you I'm, are his first lady. I'm glad you mentioned that because I, you know, when Rob was talking about that, that that's another thing because you know us, it's, and I know everybody doesn't, but you know. So I am, Rob is really quiet. Now, Rob, Rob is silly. Rob is going to laugh at you if you fall, even in the church. That's one thing I love about his. I make sure you're okay. <laughs> make that in, but he's going to laugh if you're okay. I mean, he is definitely, I'm I'm the more rigid personality in our relationship, and Rob is much more like, it's not that deep. It's not. So mm -hmm. I was really worried about what will people say because I am more vocal, and I've always been up front, even before, you know, when I was a kid. And so, you know, sometimes, and you know, when, in ministry, especially when you, you know, have this kind of traditional mindset that says, you know, 
if a woman talks too much or she's up front, oh, she's going to run him. She's going to. So all of those things, you know, already had been in my mind because our personalities are so different. But what I love about Rob is Rob is like, I don't care what people think. I know who I am and I know who you are and I value you the way you are. So what he says, you know, about me, I, I sometimes cringe, but he's like, I need that God called me and my wife and I know what she brings. I know what I bring. I know how we compliment each other. So while I'm struggling with it, he's like moving, he's moved on past that. And so yeah. I appreciate that he lets Rob really does allow me to be me now. I'm, you know, I let gets, you know, but he, he, he knows how to bring me back and, Okay, you know, but he he allows me to be me, and I, you know, I really appreciate. I couldn't do any. I just can't. I can't exist unless I can be me. So that that's really been important. Yeah, I think you both set the example of what a marriage looks like. And again, everybody doesn't see what goes on behind closed doors in front of their business. But when you walk out and you present. You're a well put together unit. You complement each other. You know, you know, and it's like neither one of you are trying to outdo one or the other. You're a team and you can tell that. And that is what matters. And I think a lot of times in marriage, first off, we don't look at each other as equal and complimenting each other. You know, somebody has to be the lead and somebody has to follow or whatever. And I totally agree as far as the order of the church that the husband is the head yes. and the wife and the children. But as far as when we are doing God's work and we're in ministry together, he called you together, but you both bring something different mm -hmm. that is valuable to the table mm -hmm. and it wouldn't work without you doing it together. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that makes it so beautiful. So I want to know you guys have been together forever and God preordains everything. <laughs> so when you were younger, is this the road you knew that you were going to be on? On this day, <laughs> absolutely not. This is the world we would have ran from. We we absolutely. didn't even talk about it because it was not on the table. We no. nothing. I mean, I can't. And I think some people think when people say that, no, nah, you know, you. I don't know who wants unless you just know God has called you to pastor. If that get that, but I, <laughs> I don't know who just wants to. We ran. We this yeah. is not. We enjoyed. Yeah, we enjoyed helping Pastor Jackson. Yeah. Yes. And 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 our plan was when he retired, wherever he moved to, we were going to go and move with him. <laughs> move, we were going to move in with him <laughs> and take care of him. He was really getting us ready yeah. for a, a new pastor. And yeah. we, we had decided, we were just like, nah. we, you know, when he when we, we're going to get ready, when he retires, whoever comes, we're going to support. We're going to we, we yeah. enjoy what I call sub leadership. You know, we we're called mm -hmm. leadership. We, we've always known that. But we. We want to make, and I, I don't, this is, I feel like this about, even for Rob's ministry, like I want to make somebody else's vision come alive. Like I want to help move somebody else's dream forward. And, and that's, you know, that's yeah. what we were doing with Pastor. We would have never, never. Um, we, we fought, it, we fought together, not against Up each other. Up until the last two we, or three I'm weeks. in tears and, <laughs> um, and he, he'll tell you even beyond that. I, I still have a lot of times when I'm like, what in the world? Yeah. Like what is... Uh, what is this? What is God yeah. doing? And so I don't know. See, but you were, you were, you're not disappointed, though. See, the thing is, if you were setting yourself up to be next in line and you were ready to take this thing mm -hmm. over and then someone else would have came in, that yeah. could, you know, that could have been horrible. But yeah. because of the mindset you were in, God knew you would appreciate it that much more. And he knew that you are the humble people that you are, that he was leaving it in good hands. And Pastor Jackson knew what he was doing as well. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, and you, you had great leadership. And so although you feel like it's, it's big shoes to fill and, and a tough lead to follow. But again, like you said, you have a, a totally different call, a totally different ministry. Mm -hmm. And it's needed for a time such as this. You know, with with the younger generation that's coming up, they need to be able to see people in the community that they can relate to, that they understand were regular people. Because sometimes when we look at pastors, they are these larger than life people right. that you, you know, you are afraid of or that you just, you know. But when you know that you can be personable and you you actually mm -hmm. are hands on yeah. with people, mm -hmm. um, Pastor um, Scaife, with you and um, working in the police field and, and of course, knowing how that works. And then you, um, uh, Minister Relisha, working with children and adults, just working hands on within the community. That's a ministry within itself. Yeah. And so, you know, what you're doing out in the community 
only transfers over to what you are building up in your church. And so since COVID is here and, and it's been so crazy, how have you been able to keep that connection and your people together in that community tight knitted right now through these times? Yeah. Well, it's been, it's been challenging. We've been, um, we've been super busy. We've been more busy now during COVID than we were before COVID hit. Um, and, and we're not even, I mean, uh, it's like we don't have as many people in the building, but we're doing more ministry now. Um, but I, I think the main thing that we wanted to do is we wanted to make sure that we stay connected as a ministry. And, and so we made sure that we got the live stream, the virtual um, um, Facebook live and our church website. And we just and, and we get our leadership team together. And we meet on Zoom and 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 we discuss some things. We'll call meetings just to stay connected. And we make sure that we try to check on our our, our senior members, um, our Bible study. We for those that can't get on, um, inter, have internet. We have the free conference call that they can call in. And so we want to. We, we're trying to do things to stay as connected as we possibly can. Um, just during COVID, because we know that a lot of our older members um, get lonely and depressed. And so um, our focus was to really try to connect and to stay connected to them and to be as, as, as big of a blessing as we can. And so so it's it's really been uh, it's, it's really been tiresome, you know, but we're still pushing along um, and we got a great we got a great uh, membership, people who are committed to joining us in ministry, um, to doing all of that, to make ensuring that um, our members are taken care of and that we're doing things in the community, whatever the community and wherever we can help in the community, we're, we're trying to make ourselves available. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think that's the, you know, checking on our, what's really been a blessing is that we do, he mentioned our Bible study, we have morning and evening. And so our morning Bible study, we do on the free conference call. And so that's where a lot of our older members join us who are able to get on Wi-Fi. And I'm telling you, it's not like being in person, but to hear the voices, it, it, I, there's something about not seeing faces. So that and makes you, <laughs> yes, that makes you focus on the voice yeah. that just, it almost brings tears to your eyes to hear mm -hmm. singing and, and praising. I mean, the, the last few times they've just, I mean, exactly. shouting, they, yeah, they were <laughs> shouting in their homes. You can tell they walked away from the phone. I mean, it is, it, I, I think what it's done, it's, it's, and, and you, all of us, I think, want to think that we value people, we value especially our older members, and we certainly yeah. have and we do. But you, you don't even realize how much more you can value something or someone mm -hmm. until you have that gap that you work hard to, yeah. you know, reconnect, that you work hard to feel. And that's been, at least for me, that's been, my, I mean, I'm falling more and more in love with our older members because I, I feel you know, I, I, I can sense it when I talk to them, I can tell that in the, the first time COVID hit that isolation for some of them, some of them were to the point where they were like, we don't care. I don't care about getting COVID. I need somebody to come and talk to me and I need to touch somebody. I need to be. And we're like, oh, we we so we did some love drive bys and we've done some, you know, some different things to be outside in the yard. And um, but that has been it's been heart heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. But also I think we need it that mm -hmm. you know, I think we needed, I don't know about you, but when we were in our twenties and early thirties, you know, that's a time, unless you just naturally have a passion or feel a calling to, to work with older people, you're busy. You know, we raising our kids, going here, going there, you, you respect, you love, you know, it, but when, as you get older and then as your parents, you know, are aging mm -hmm. um, and in our case, my mother, um, you know, you then you you start to see how much more people really do need to know that you care and you love yeah. them. And so, I mean, I my I'm just thinking about our older people right now makes me want to cry. I mean, we yeah. I have fallen. Yeah. I need this. I hate that COVID has yeah. has has done what it's done to so many and so many families. I'm never going to make that. Never going to celebrate that. Yeah. But what God has done in the midst of this has made us focus in places and in ways that we need it to. We'll never. Yeah. Yeah. No, even when we come, we'll never go back to. Baseline. Yeah, we, yeah, we'll be thinking much more consciously and intentionally about our senior members, and I and I hate to say that not as if we weren't before, but you don't know what right. you don't, 
you know, until you get in those situations. So that's been a blessing to hear their voices and connect with them and know that just that call. I mean, it makes their day, but it also makes my day, you know, so. Yeah, we often take for granted like, oh, we're going to see each other again next week. And and now, like you said, not being able to get out and touch and hug. And I, and I that's what I said about going to church. Well, don't let me go back because I'm going to be touching everybody. So it's yeah. just, right. <laughs> you know, I can't help it. That's yeah. we, this is what we do. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I think that physical connection means a lot. Like when um the older people are able to come to church, that's their time to go and to be able to congregate and be around people yeah. and feel love. And so at a time such as this, it's like probably way overwhelming because they've lived their whole life and now they're at this situation where, okay, what's going to happen next? You know, Mm -hmm. so knowing that they have leaders that take the time, they care, that put that quality into taking the next step to reaching out with a phone call or even doing a Mm drive-by, that speaks volumes to just Mm -hmm. showing the heart that you have to touch everybody, not just the young ones, but the older ones as well. And so, I mean, it's got to be a lot on your heart at night when you when you get ready to lay down and you think about the day and everything that's happening, maybe everything that you haven't been able to accomplish, what is it that you use both of you? Because again, both being in the ministry together, so you, you're not, there's no way of escaping it. It's always there. So what do you do for each other for a a way of release to just be able to be replenished again? Well, um, I, I usually try not to tell her everything that goes on because she she gets frazzled and, and you know, and so I, I there's some things that I just really would try to do um, without her knowing. And then but we, we constantly just have to have that, that line of communication open. And we, we talk about ministry all the time. Uh, we're all I mean, I and I tell her I'm the type of person that I can go to sleep at night and three minutes as soon as I hit the pillow, I'm asleep, you know, but (laughs) the last four years I I told her, I said, my mind has constantly been running because I'm thinking about ministry and I've never done that before. Um, I still go to sleep, but I'm constantly thinking about what we need to do at the church and all of this. And so we constantly just throw things off of each other all the time. She throws more at me than I throw at her. But she thinks more. She's more creative than I tell. I tell people all the time. My wife is smarter than me. She really is. And so in some areas, in most areas, you know, um, but she's smarter than me. And and that's and that's okay, You know, and so but, you know, we just make sure that we just talk and and throw things off of each other Um, when we're when we're frustrated with each other on some days. We we give us our time and then we come back and we we, ministry doesn't stop when we're frustrated. But. Mm -hmm. We, mm-hmm. just, we just have to understand and appreciate what each other brings. And, and I think that's what helps me the most. We, you know, we are, we're typical right brain, left brain, male, <laughs> female. I mean, you know, the, the, it doesn't have to be that way, but for us, it really is. And our, and our marriage is very, very traditional in the sense that our roles and I'm, I cook and do that stuff and he don't write bologna. <laughs> bologna, my word, does not count. <laughs> and it stinks but anyway um um but so we that's what you know when he says you're i'm smarter he, you know you know how it is his brain works better in math and the you know the details of things and i'm dreaming like yeah let's do you know so god knew you said it earlier i mean you know we were 15 when we started called ourselves dating um and I, you know, I marvel at God. Um, and of course, we've made mistakes along the way. You know, we've got a son who's 29, mm-hmm. do the math. But uh, <laughs> yeah, he's old. Isn't he? But anyway, um, <laughs> but, but we, but God knew, like God knew that my rigid yet creative personality, who is, you know, a perfectionist in some ways, would need Rob's, you know, calm down. And then, yeah. but he is deep. I'm spontaneous and he's detailed. Like God just knew that. And, and like you said, he had a plan. I'm still like, really, but he had a plan and, and he knew what, what he wanted, how he wanted to use us in marriage and ministry, you know, with our families. And so I know for me, um, I don't rest well. I, I don't rest well. I, I tuned into your um, mindfulness a little bit today earlier. Um, and I, and I thought, I'm so grateful for people like you who are, who are doing things like this. Um, 
because, and you know this, culturally, subculturally, not trying to suggest it's all black folks, but but in subcultures, like my, the subculture I grew up in as an African-American um, and in church culture, we did not, we couldn't afford counseling. We couldn't afford medicines. And you know what we did, we handled things in-house. We're going to pray, mm-hmm. we're going to put Cousin Joe in the room, we're going to take care of him, but we're not going, we're not letting everybody in. And, and, you know, to this yep. day, there are good reasons not to let everybody in because you can't receive everything. But I thought about this opportunity to share with you and, and I wanted to just tell you, God bless you, and I'm praying for how God's using you because a lot of us won't go get the help that we need. And, and I'm so grateful for people like Demetria Jackson and others who are doing, who, you know, love the Lord, grew up in the church and say, you know, this is not, this is really not God plus, this is a part of God's plan. I believe in strategy. And sometimes part of the strategy is you go get you a counselor. Sometimes a part of that strategy is you may have to be on something to just regulate for a little while. And so um, we, Robert and I, we started doing um, really early and, you know, he's only been in four years of pastor, pastoral counseling, but we had, we've had several marriages to do in that time. And so it's a requirement that if he marries you, we do premarital counseling, mm-hmm. so we premarital counseling. And then, I mean, right away we were, we were after the counseling sessions, we were like, people need real counseling. <laughs> We don't know. We know we can we can tell you what the word says. We we do believe that God has blessed our marriage, and so we can we can talk about some things. But then we decided, you know what? We have heard about so many marriages in ministry that people will be married for twenty years, and then the pastor, the husband or wife, start preaching and pastoring, and the marriage falls apart. So because mm-hmm. of that, not because there was something going on wrong in our marriage, but because of that statistic, and because we were trying to counsel others, we decided we're gonna go get some counseling. So we started Thanks. going to the marriage council of ourselves and we want to be a good example to God's people that you don't let your mm-hmm. marriage fall apart or or your world fall apart when you when you belong to the Lord. Ask him for a strategy. And I just and believe I was frustrated. It, yeah, right. It, it frustrated. He didn't me. want to go to I, when we went the first couple of times. I was like, I am not going back. You know, I was like, we were OK until <laughs> I went, you know. Yeah, because now you learn some things yeah. about stuff you didn't want to know. Yeah, and the guy, the, the, you know, Dr. Lon, he he showed us, he, he showed me me, you know, he was just like, mm-hmm. everything that happens, it's, it's your fault. Well, it, it seemed like and every he, time it went, every was, time, and I was like, she, she messed up like today, this. it was her fault today, <laughs> and he was he, he, he just shaking his head, and he was like, you know, so it's, it's your, it's your fault, and I'm looking at him like, okay, will you tell her she, at least tell her she's wrong, at you know, what? but but I, but that's but we that's the truth it. of the matter. You know, it. Yeah. it helped me to see. I didn't like it. I, it was a hard pill mm-hmm. to swallow. But now I'm I'm seeing the the wisdom, just mm-hmm. in in his in his counseling, and and that's actually helped me. Um, you know, I I still get I still get frustrated with my my wife. I still mm-hmm. you know we still have days where we won't we won't talk. Yeah. Or, you know, not, not, all I, not all day, but you know, I, <laughs> yeah. either, but then I'll come back around and I know that I gotta, I gotta, I gotta apologize because I'm, I'm the house band, you know, that's what husband is. I'm the house band. And so, mm-hmm. so, but yeah, so counseling, that is a, a definite requirement mm-hmm. for marriage. I think people should, whether it's formal, you know, depending yeah. on, but, but I, I said that not to get away from your question, but mm-hmm. just to say that, you know, not just ministry, but life. Yeah. Right now, I mean, you, you think about our parents, did not it seem like it was simpler for your mom and your parents? Mm-hmm. It just, I mean, and so we know the word says that things are going to get worse and, and, and yeah. pressure. So whether you're in ministry or not, there's so many pressures on a marriage and on a person that we just, we have to take care of ourselves. So I, I say yeah. that to confess that I still have not done the things that I know I need to do so that I can rest well, mm-hmm. but, but you helped me today when I was listening to you and I, and it's just, the day gets busy and I get so focused on all of the tasks that, yes. that, you know, and as women, we do that, that, you know, what I need kind of goes by the wayside, but I'm grateful because if Rob were burdened constantly, it would, it would be very challenging mm-hmm. for me. He, he, he brings a sense of calm to me because he's not, I guess he's not telling me everything, but he he's able to carry it in a way. Now you don't have a problem tonight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I can fold up into him. That's what I want to say. You know, mm-hmm. when, I mean, doesn't it doesn't make things go away, but I can fold up into him and know that I'm not alone. And he there's mm-hmm. safety, of course, in the Lord, but he's given me my husband and I can. And because of his personality, I can kind of rest a little bit better knowing that he's going to help carry the load. So, yeah, 
Yeah. And, you know, it's very important. And I think that as we get older and we're starting to see things a little bit differently than what we were taught or what we saw growing up and, and we start recognizing that, you know, it's OK. It's OK to ask for help. It's so no matter yeah. who it is, even if, if it's coming to your pastor. But how can you pour or help someone if you've got things going on that you can't deal with? Everybody needs a outlet, a release. Even the two of you with each other, and me and my husband with each other, we still, yeah. you know, you can't continue to dump, dump, dump That's all right. the time, That's and right. then you know you you're not actually being replenished. And so I think counseling is good because it does have you take a look in the mirror at who you are, and and it's not about the other person; mm -hmm. it's about you. It's mm -hmm. not about what you're maybe doing or That's not right. doing. It's about what you are doing and who you are and how you are able to acknowledge your, yourself. Mm -hmm. And I believe that it makes you more authentic. It yes. makes you be transparent and real with your ministry mm -hmm. because you know that the enemy will use anything yes. that he can yes. to get at you. But yes. when you are being authentic and transparent, you know what? It is yeah. what it is. That's right. It, I know we're not going to always get along. Okay. I know that sometimes think, you know, but there's a way to work through that. Mm -hmm. And again, I believe everything is a ministry. I believe God puts everything together to be a ministry in some type of way to help us to be better as people, as human beings. And once we are OK with ourselves, then we can build relationships. Mm -hmm. And that's how you're able to make it. So, you know. You you talk you brought it up. So since you brought it up, I'm gonna just go ahead and put it out there. But no, you had your son at a young age. Now there's some young girls and guys out there that may be in a situation that feel like, oh, I'm young, I've messed up. Oh my God, what am I gonna do? Suicide is on the rise right now. I, know, right? I mean, it, it it's scary, mm -hmm. and I believe our kids are way better off <laughs> than what we grew up with. And they have more depression and anxiety and things going on that they don't talk about. They're a lot open though. They're a lot more open with their sexuality and the things that they do. But to those young people that think that life is just fun and free and fair, but they get in a situation and feel like all hope is lost. What do you what do you tell that young girl or young guy to to know that thirty years from now you won't be thinking this way? It's just hold on. What 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 advice do you have for them? <laughs> God is so gracious. I mean, he has he has a plan, and and I don't say that. I mean, it seems so cliche. There there are absolutely consequences to decisions yeah. you make either way. There definitely are. Um, you and you have to you have to choose God's path. Yeah. I think to I, and I say that just because you know we, we think about things that are you know objects that are made. We we only know really how to use an object the right way when we go back to the manufacturer or we go back, you know, to the manual. Well God is the manufacturer and he has a manual. And if if we're going to live as they say your best life and that certainly doesn't mean a life without trials and tribulations, the word of God promises we'll have those. But if you're going to live your best life, you just turn to the Lord. I think what, what we, and even growing up, you know, I didn't have a proper understanding of grace. Um, I, you know, I, I've, you know, I've been freed up to understand what grace really is. Now, certainly, you know, grace covers sins, but grace also helps to keep me from, like I, something in me needs to restrain me. But I'm, but I'm, I would tell a young person, no matter what, and we hear this often, no matter what choices you make, mm -hmm. come back to God. The, the worst thing you can do, the worst thing you can do is not the sin or the bad choice. The worst thing you can do is to run from God. And that's what we what we grew up thinking, you know, let me, oh, God's so ashamed of me. I'm going to run. I'm going to leave. I'm going to walk away. I'm going to, you know, and, and even though we knew that we're supposed to come back, that time we're away, that's that's the time when God is saying, no, come closer to me. And I know how we mess that up. I think the prodigal story makes that clear, but we still mess it up. Don't run away. Yes. When you, I think here, think about it with, with churches. When we grew up, when I was younger, in a lot of churches, if a person partied and got drunk on Saturday, Friday and Saturday night and came to church, people were looking down, turning their nose up. I'm saying, I don't care what you did Saturday night. 
Please come show up on Sunday morning. Please. Yeah. The door is open for you to come. That's not hypocritical. You, you didn't, you're not pretending like you just show up. If you got to sit in the back, show up. And so I think mm -hmm. teaching young people, the worst thing you can do is to run away from God in the midst of your brokenness, in the midst of your sinfulness, whatever it is, run to God so that he can begin to mend and heal. Don't run away. That's what I would say. Don't run away from him. I know it feels like you should. You're ashamed. You're embarrassed. That's the worst thing. And that's what the enemy wants. The, the, the sin uh, that's just a little piece of it. The enemy really wants to get you in bondage to the guilt, the guilt of, of the sin. Mm -hmm. That's what we're mm -hmm. you we can't break free from is the guilt. So don't run from God, no matter what you think you've yeah. done, no matter how bad you think it is, run to him and let him begin to do the work of transform. And, transform. That, and that's and, that, and that's the that's the key piece to that whole situation. We we've, we've encountered young people who have who, who had kids at 15, 16, 17. And 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 we we've just tried to encourage them because we've been in their shoes. And so but, you know, you can't forget the Lord because he's he's not he's not going to turn his back That's on right. you. Uh, right. And we, we turn our back on him with our guilt. But also mm -hmm. what she what she stated, but also you got to you got to get a good support system. Yes. I mean, we have people, our family, our mm -hmm. church. Um, our church family, our community, they were behind us and pushing us, you know, although they, 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 they considered it a setback, you know, um, but we were still pushing forward and we had a great support system. And, and, and I, and we tell everybody to this day, we didn't just raise Wani, our son, a whole bunch of people helped us raise him. And so, and I think that's what, that's what young people need to see. Look, you yeah it's a setback you know yeah you you messed up it's a setback but you can you, you you'll be all right yeah, you know so just keep pushing forward make sure you have the proper people in your corner pushing you encouraging you and i guarantee you you'll 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 be all right and you'll be you'll have a testimony i don't think that don't mean go do something just so you can be a testimony yeah the right is done you know, we you push forward, but you will have a testimony. You will have a story, and that and you know, you said it a little bit ago, um, and that hits me when we when Rob accepted the the calling to pastor. One of the things that was heavy for me was we are so imperfect ourselves. Mm -hmm. We had a whirlwind of things happening right at that time, devastating things happening around us in our lives, and I was like, we can't do this with this particular thing happening. We can't. How can we? People gonna be looking at us like y'all house ain't even in order. How can you? And I had a really wise person say to me, "That's what people need to see." I mean, not mm -hmm. that you know, people need to see. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't sin. We weren't caught up in sin, but right. there were things happening in our family with family members that seemed devastating. That seemed like they would mar our name or make us. And and the person said, "We, like you said already, things are shifting." And and not that there was ever a time when leaders were perfect. What we have seen is people hold them up so much that when they fall, we we are all devastated. These are humans. Mm -hmm. So yeah, God called us right in the in a time in the midst of something that we thought would take us out, and He still mm -hmm. called us. And He said, "Now you let me use this to grow you, to grow others. Let me use this to make you more acceptable and understanding of where people are." In life, and so he, I mean, he he said that, and then he's just shown us how he has tra changed us. What he say? If, if you don't, if you don't change the situation, he he'll change you in the midst. That's been our testimony. Mm -hmm. If you don't change the situation around you, and, and that thing has not changed, but God has changed us for the better in the midst of that. And that's, I mean, that's just been our testimony. And it's evident. It's evident in your walk, in your ministry, in your faith, and it's it's just a blessing. So. Um, I, I could talk to y'all all night. Seriously, <laughs> we could we could talk all night. And there's so much that um we still have to learn. And I keep praying that, oh God, put it off a little bit longer. <laughs> mm -hmm. Don't don't put us in a church just yet. You know, I'm not ready to because I, I, I feel the same way with, as you said. It's like, okay, God, right now at this moment in time with everything that's going on, you you want us to do this right now? Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, but I feel like it has strengthened us and it has helped us in so many ways, but I'm still like, it's so much still that I want to learn before, you know, put us out there, but I know it's the right time and the right place. It'll happen. And so I just want to continue to be able to look to people that 
we can say, okay, they've done it. This is what is working. And we know that because they work together and they're a team, and this is what the example that they're showing, that's what we want to be able to do as well. And so I want to talk to you about the one thing that I know the enemy loves to attack, and that's our children. So how have you kept your children grounded and rooted throughout this ministry? And you've raised some great kids. So how does that happen? <laughs> <laughs> well. Well, we we made it a point early in their lives that that we would that they grew up in church, and so that was not an option. And so we made sure that whenever we had to go to church, you're going to church. And we didn't send them and not go. We went. So we made sure we set the example. We made sure that they that they had their morning devotions. Lish did mainly all the devotions, and so she led all of that. And so what we wanted to do is we wanted to make sure, and we were taught that, to make sure that our kids were grounded in the faith. And so when they get older, they'll have that faith to fall back on. And so we and we, we didn't know where life will take our kids after they get 18 and move out. But we were hoping that once we put the word in them, you know, then, then once they left our house, that word would come out. And if not, we would put the word on them, you know, <laughs> and continue to encourage them. And so um, it's, you know, we, we love our kids. We, I think, I think we got some great kids, you know, but you know, they, they, you know, the, the two oldest ones, you know, they, they, you know, they, they've, they've done their stuff, you know, and so uh, it was, it was a challenge for us. You know, uh, my wife took it harder because she felt that she, she failed as a mother. And I was like, it's not your fault. You did. We did everything that we could. You know, mm -hmm. they're making their own decisions. But my mama used to always say uh, with Proverbs 22, uh, 6, train up a child in the way that they should go. My mama used to say, when they get old, they come, they'll come back. Yeah, you she know, <laughs> she put her own, that was her version. own version. <laughs> and so she said, when yeah. they get old, they'll come back. And so we just, we just. You know, it, it was it was it's, it was difficult for us to see our kids, and we knew the path that they we knew that they were going to fall, and we were trying to warn them. But you know, sometimes you just got to let them experience that. But then, you know, you know, uh, the Lord brought them back around, and so we we we're, we're just um, we're still learning. You know, we got one more to go, and we're still learning, and and just watching the process, and we're just trusting God with our kids because he already knows those are his kids that he he gave us um, to take care of and to pour into. And we, if we do what he said to do, we know that he's going to carry them once they leave our mm -hmm. house. And so um, that, that's, that's, that's how I look at it. And, um, and that's how we've been operating. I think the other thing though is, is, you know, you, you do your best and I have struggled. I have, that's a whole nother conversation. I struggle. I'm telling you, I, 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 I have a book title in my head. One day I'm gonna write it in this call. The title is when the queen's castle crumbles. Cause that's how I felt about motherhood. And the Lord has taught me so much. I, I, I put without knowing, I put motherhood and my kids, not so much them, but my ability to teach and train them. I put it uh, at some point ahead of God. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that because guess what I was doing? I was actually teaching and training them about God, yeah. but somehow the alignment and the order got mm -hmm. messed up. And you, you, you know, when you do that, it, it messes things up, things get all jumbled. And, and I'm not saying that that's why they chose things that they, it, God was saying it, that's, this is about you and you are mm -hmm. falling apart. Yeah, because they're not doing what you expect them to do. You have one time I, I prayed to the Lord. I said, talking about one of my kids, God, go get them, chase them down, chase them. The Lord said, I'm trying to chase you down. Where are you going? You know, you you want me? I'm you. I, you. This is not your sin. You are so caught up in their stuff mm -hmm. that you have left. Because I was saying, Lord, they have left you. Well, he or she has left you, and mm -hmm. Lord, you are leaving me. Yeah. You have left your trust in me. You have left your faith in me. Come on, you come back. I got that. You come back. So it really has been challenging for me. I do think that one of the things is we enjoy our kids. Yeah. So we get disappointed and we get mad at them. But two things in this house, faith and fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have been 
very free in our home. Um, I don't think our kids, if somebody said, you guys are PKs, I think they'd have to think a minute. Oh, yeah, we are. Because that traditional mindset of real, being real now, I, we, we were strict. But we, we offer like, OK, so you're not going to be able to go there, but we're going to do that here. You know, we offer mm -hmm. fun. Our house has been for even for my nieces and nephews. We've been the fun house. Now they all growing mm -hmm. up and come over. But so we 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 made sure. And, and honestly, Rob is so silly and funny like he and the kids are a lot like him in that way. So I think that now that I'm kind of coming out of that place where I beat myself up about what I did or didn't do as a mom. And I did. I I, I carried that now mm -hmm. I can look back and say. I enjoy my kid. We enjoy our kids. We do. You know, they're not perfect. We certainly weren't. You know, you forget that. But uh, they are good kids and, yeah. and they know the Lord and they know right from wrong. And so we we talk. You heard him say we put the word in them. And now what we do is we put the word on them. And what we mean by that is we're they can't stop our prayer. They may be able to say, my mom, want to hear that scripture. I'm, but you can't put the prayer on them. They don't know. We yeah. every night, every day we're praying. So we are we're enjoying, I think, the fruit of the labor in terms of. Of, of making it faith filled, but also fun. And so I don't think we'll ever have to worry about our kids not coming home. Like they, this is a safe place for them. They enjoy, we laugh, we play. They know we don't agree with everything, every choice they make. And they understand that, but that doesn't keep them away. And I would be devastated if that kept them away. So like he said, we, you know, we, we were 17. And so we still feel like we're still learning because we messed up that you know, we didn't learn. We didn't have enough under our belt before we started a family. So now we're it's almost like we're p playing catch up with all of them, even though Wani was the one that was born early. So we you know, we're, we're learning and God is growing us more. Maybe we're growing more than they are in the midst of it all. But it's it's his grace and His mercy and his favor. I mean, he's you know, it's it's just been a process, but I'm we're grateful. And, and to go through it together. Like, I don't I definitely don't think I could have handled the way I was dealing with motherhood, you know, putting in, like you said, all those hours of uh, every morning Bible study, Bible study. So I'm putting it, I was basically, basically saying, Lord, I'm putting the coins in the machine so that when the time comes, I know I'm, we going to get, I'm going to get out this machine what I put in, you know, and the Lord's mm -hmm. like, so you in control of this. I said, so, so yeah. you got to what happened. And so he had to, you know, he had to bring me back down and, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, oh, he, he will humble us. He will. I really believe that children is the reflection of who God is. I mean, because I promise you, I've got a blog. It's called Mommy Needs a Nap. And every time I think about writing in that blog, I just be like, oh, I just can't even get started today. But every time I reflect on it, it reminds me that, ooh, I learned something about me and something that the Lord is trying to tell me. And I'm just like, OK, so you're the one that should be in trouble. But truthfully, I'm the one that is learning something from this. And and I get you with the crying and the like, oh, Jesus, what did I do wrong? We haven't. And so I got to the point where I'm like now, OK, I know I've taught you the right things. I know I've instilled in you the right things. So when you go out there, you're in good hands. Yeah. I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to, you know, because when I thought I was actually helping, I was hurting. I'm trying to help you out, but I'm beating you up and trying to tell you, yeah. you know, and, yeah. you know, and that can make your children withdraw from you. Yeah. And so I've learned so much. And so it's funny because they think that I'm serious, this serious person. And I'm like, who is this lady they're talking about? Mm -hmm. And I go, oh, because I'm a mom. And I'm like, I don't, I never wanted to be that stuffy mom that forgot she was a teenager. Yeah. But when you have these precious lives in your hands, yeah. <laughs> and not only that, but when you cover them in the water and, and you have the blood of Jesus on them, mm -hmm. you're responsible for those That's lives. It. And it's yeah. terrifying to think that, mm -hmm. okay, God, what if I mm -hmm. mess up and, and steer them the wrong way? But in us doing that, sometimes we, we mess it up just because we're trying to, you know, so I'm I'm trying to be more hands off. I got a six year old that runs our house now, but uh, she keep coming out here asking for drinks. So I'm like, yeah. and she she only do it when I start recording, but yeah. it's okay. And I'm just I'm just thankful and grateful to be able to see people I grew up with in the town that I come from that are making a difference, that are empowering others, that are impacting families 
and that is just changing the way that we look at things and not being so because you are fun. You're you're a fun family and you are a faithful family and you're loving and you're kind and you're encouraging, but you're not acting like you're somebody that oh we're in this position now. You you mm-hmm. and you're so easy to come and talk to. And I can see why your people would love to be with you and your congregation and to to be around you because of what energy you bring. And that's why God placed you there. And so with me doing this whole marriage and ministry, I just wanted to look at different aspects of what people in ministry were doing. Because like I said, now there's a lot more husbands and wives that are coming up together. When Frank and I um, took our call and and started our um, classes for ordination, we were the only couple. Mm -hmm. And it was so funny because now they're like, in, in our denomination, they're like so many couples that are coming. And I'm encouraging that. I'm like, yeah. you should be because I, I talked to one wife and she was saying how hard it was because her husband was always gone and, you know, she never got to spend time with him. And I'm like, you guys have to do ministry together. Yes. It, it's not just his work. You, you have to do this together. Mm-hmm. Realize why God put y'all together. And it's not so he can go off and you can stay home. Mm-hmm. It's because he put you in this together so mm-hmm. you can minister together. And now she's in ministry and they are doing it together. And I'm like, it's a beautiful thing because that's what keeps the family together and keeps us focused. And I believe no matter what your ministry is, whether it be in the church or outside the church, whatever it is, it should be a family affair. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what keeps us grounded, rooted and connected. Mm -hmm. And so I just appreciate the time that you're taking out with your oneness, cute little shirts on Mm -hmm. and and everything. So where can can people get these cute shirts from? (laughs) Yeah, you know what, I think we got these from, we went to a family. That weekend to remember. remember. Uh, Okay. Yeah, focus on the family. And and you do. You do fun, engaging things like that to keep mm-hmm. your yourself yep. together. Me and Frank went, we were gifted a trip to Vegas and it was supposed to be for seven days. We ended up being there for 11 days. Oh, and I told him, I was like, I haven't been with you this long since we got together. And it was so refreshing. This It was mm-hmm. like, you know, we learned each other all over mm-hmm. again. And, and I remember my mom goes, yeah, y'all used to do stuff all the time. Now y'all don't do nothing. And I go, yeah, because this parenting thing, this yeah. ministry thing, everything, mm-hmm. you know, and what we have been learning is with COVID. I'm so, I, again, I'm not grateful for COVID, but at the mm-hmm. same time, yeah. I'm thanking God for this time because he has brought us closer together and he's mm-hmm. gave us an opportunity to reconnect and yeah. so i think it's a beautiful thing and again mm-hmm. like we have people, good examples like you to look up to and to come to and be like hey what do you think about this because i know it's a lot of things i'm gonna do wrong because i talk too much i already know that i already know and, and i used to think that people was like oh they've got all these kids how great is it and then i realized that like, they got all these kids i was like <laughs> <laughs> i'm like <laughs> so you know everything that I'm thinking in my mind is gonna be a great thing. Like, yeah, oh, yeah she moves and shakes too much. The kids is too much. Yeah. You know, just sit down somewhere. But yeah. that's who God designed us to be. Right. Yeah. That's right. And and if He would have called us 20, 30 years ago, we might be in trouble. But yes. for this day and time, I think I yeah. think we've arrived right at the right time, and yeah. it's a blessing. Absolutely. He knows what He's doing. Thank you both. Thank, Thank you. you both for being a blessing. And is there anything final that you would like to say before we get off of here? Let anybody know. Hey, just remind just remind yourself, Memo. I tell my wife all the time, you know, at the end of the day, no matter what happens, no matter what goes on with our kids, our family, ministry, at the end of the day, it's it's just me and her. And so Amen. we go to bed together, we wake up together, yeah. and we start all over again. And so that's our focus. Yeah. Amen. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Well, that's my final thoughts was we are so we were so nervous about this. You know, I wanted questions, I wanted stuff ahead of time. But but thank you because it was fun and it was just what you said, just a conversation. So we appreciate it. Thanks yeah. for that. And that's but, what I appreciate because I know people are like, what is she doing and why is she doing this? You stated something earlier that sometimes people that just um have a voice but haven't heard and don't really that's what i created this platform for Mm -hmm. was for people to be able to come on and talk about different things that's going on in the community in the church in the workplace and you guys have covered it all tonight and so that's just i think a beautiful thing 
But there is so much talent right here in our own city that is overlooked and so many people that go unnoticed. And so I just wanted this platform for people to know that there's resources and there's other people like them and there's opportunities and we can make those opportunities ourselves. We don't have to go outside yeah, to right. find them. They're right here. You just got to know where to look and anything that I can help people out with, I'm going to bring it to the forefront. And yeah. so... Thank you for being a part of this. And yeah. I um it's gonna go on a podcast. And so once I get everything together and I get it um downloaded, I will make sure that you guys get a copy. You can use it however you want. And just again, thank you for being a blessing. Yeah. Right. Thank, thank you. you for having us. Love you, girl. All right. Love you. Have Bye -bye. a good day. Love you too. Thank you. All, All right, right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Um, I want to say Muncie's pastors. And everybody, they we've watched them grow up and be together and be a family and be a model and an example. And so if you want to know what marriage and family and ministry looks like, this is a good example for you to look at. And I know that they're both modest and, and humble people. So they aren't looking at it to say they need pats on the backs or accolades or anything. And that's what makes them genuine and who they truly are. And so I believe that if you are in need or if you're hurting or if you need somewhere to turn, that these two have a door that's open, that's going to be willing to bring you in and help you and point you in the right direction. Everybody needs to know that there's somebody in their life out there and they are the example. So if you're looking for a church home or a place where you can go and and have faith and fun, check out Union Missionary Baptist Church. <laughs> it's been around for a long time and I'm sure it's not going anywhere anytime soon. And with these leaders in place, I believe that they are going to do a great service for the community and for Muncie for a long time to come. And anybody out there that would like to come on and talk about your talents or resources or gifts or your church or ministry or whatever it is that you'd like to offer to the community or to the world, come on over and we can have that conversation. Until next time, remember you were created with purpose. God bless. Okay, you two don't go nowhere. <laughs>